Now I want to look at three different vectors here. The position vector, which we're going to call r, the velocity vector, and the acceleration vector. So three related, remember these are all related by time derivatives. And I want to look at these under two different coordinate systems. When we, one, first when we ex express these three in the rectangular components, so kind of like a x, y, and z, and second in the uh, radial and transverse components. But we'll instead look at um, describing r instead of kind of the x, y, z axes, but the radial and ang angular directions. So first let's write r, the components of r, this way we've got x, we'll call this the i-hat direction, so we've got x units in the i-hat direction, plus y units in the j-hat direction, plus z units in the k-hat direction. Now this, let's uh, sketch out our coordinate system here. So we've got three axes. Um, the i hat would be a unit vector along this axis. The j hat goes along that axis, and the k hat along this third axis. So, in order to describe this point R, so we've got some point R here. We've got this R vector. And that r vector could equivalently be described by coming down so many units on the i hat, going up so many units in the j hat, and then over so many units in the k hat direction. And that would describe that. So if we have the position vector r like that, what would the velocity vector look like? And that's quite simple in these coordinate system. It would just look, we could write it this way. It's the RDT. And it'll just be the time derivative of x. Remember we use this notation, uh, a dot above the x to indicate the time derivative of x, this kind of shorthand notation, in the i hat direction plus the time derivative of y in the j-hat direction, plus the time derivative of z in the k-hat direction. Now similarly, we can write for the acceleration it's the time derivative, derivative of the velocity vector, and that's just going to be the second derivative of x in the i-hat direction plus the second derivative of y in the j-hat direction plus the second derivative of z in the k-hat direction. So this was all done for this rectangular components. Now let's look next at the radial and transverse components. So we've got the same vector r and we're going to express it in a different set of coordinates. So I'm going to write it instead this way where we have r, the r vector is just a distance r in this e sub r hat direction And it's at an angle theta in the e sub theta hat direction. Now this ex expression, so it's the same vector r. Let me go back and look at this. So the same vector r, instead of ex expressing it in terms of along the i hat, j hat, k hat direction, now we just take the r, so we've got this distance from here to here, in the r hat direction, and that's just a a distance from the origin, and then we use an angle theta to describe to describe its position, um, perhaps relative to a central axis. 
um, in, let's see, you would need, in three dimensions, you would need a second angle to fully specify this vector. In this case, I, we're assuming that second angle is zero. So if we've got that r vector um, expressed in this way, how could we write the velocity vector? Well, we would just write it this way. We've got r dot in this first direction plus r theta dot in the second direction. So, in this case, because these um, coordinate, the basis of this coordinate is not as simple as this i hat, j hat, k hat, uh, we get kind of these cross terms. And so the velocity depends in, in each case, so in the, the, the theta hat direction case, depends not only on the rate of change of theta, but also on r itself the magnitude of the, the distance from the origin. And let's see how complicated this gets when we look at it, the acceleration. Now we've got it to consider the second derivative of r minus r theta dot squared in the r e sub r hat direction plus another complex term here we've got r theta double dot so remember this is the uh, second derivative of theta right here with respect to time plus 2r dot theta double dot in the theta hat direction. So you can see why the uh, the choice of de of why the the coordinate system choice is important. In some cases, um, the, the choice might make the calculation easier in one set of bases, for instance, this uh, radial transverse components, but in other cases, it's probably much easier to do it in the rectangular components. Let's take a quick look at a third type of coordinate system you might construct, uh, which is useful in some situations. So we'll call this the, the tangential and normal components, and in this case, uh, let me sketch this out. We might have a point, and here we've got a, co a, a kind of a localized coordinate system where at any moment this uh, point could be moving in some direction, per perhaps following this path. So along this path, we can kind of define a, a local coordinate system that has two parts. One, the, the tangential part, and so that would be kind of defined to be along its instantaneous direction of motion. So in this case, we've got a particle going like this at a certain point. It's right here moving in this direction. And then the normal part to that, and that'll be directed perpendicular to that tangential part. So you could see this coordinate system shifts along as this particle moves along. And this is useful for some calculations. So in this case, we have the velocity is really equal to the velocity, kind of by definition, the magnitude of the velocity in the tangential direction. So. This, this is kind of by definition. So when we have that, we could calculate the acceleration. And this is where things get a little more interesting. 
the acceleration will equal the time derivative of the velocity in that tangential direction plus the square, that's v squared, divided by rho, and I'll define that in a second, in the normal direction. So what is rho? Well, rho is the radius of curvature. Now this uh, depends upon the motion, but at any at any point here, one could say, um, let's see, you could take kind of the instantaneous arc here and trace it back to some center point where that arc would go into a, a continuous circle. So that this would be the radius of curvature. Now, you could think, you could say, well, what happens if it's along a straight line where you don't really have a radius of curvature? So, if your particle is moving on a straight line, you know, you could take a look at this and say, well, that radius of curvature is very large. You know, rho is here. But then, um, as, as you move as rho gets larger and larger, as the center point moves further and further out, this arc here will more and more approach a straight line. And in the limit where rho goes to infinity, you will have a straight line. So what happens when rho is infinite? Well, let's look back here. If, as in the limit that this goes to infinity, this term goes to zero and a is just dv dt. So just as we've done before motion in a straight line, you would just have the acceleration is equal to the time derivative of the velocity.